Today we're going to look at a friend of mine who is an artist. Her name is Linda Hunt and I own many of her paintings. Let's get started. All right, this is a picture of Linda and I only know her through the internet and from some phone conversations. I think she's kind of shy, so I hope she doesn't mind that I pulled this photo from her website, which you can find at Linda Hunt Fine Art. This is a painting that I own of hers. So when I wake up in the morning, this is the first thing I see. I own quite a few Linda paintings and I've also given as gifts more than a few Linda paintings because they just please me so much. This is the second thing I see when I wake up. And it is just as beautiful as this in real life. I get constant ins in inspiration from her painting. It, it's, um, I just find it delightful. Now, she is not just a painter uh, in oil. She also will work in watercolor. She also works in fiber. This was something that she did for a Valentine's Day. And if you look closely, it's stitched and it is a box of chocolates. I have no idea how someone does this, but I think it's such a good example of someone that's an artist who lives in a creative way. So they don't just think about painting. They're thinking about how to be creative in, in all ways. This is uh, also some cut paper. So I just wanted to show you that once again, she is very willing to experiment, which I admire tremendously. I am way more locked in when it comes to painting than someone like Linda, but I also always enjoy artists who not just live on the canvas, but live, in, live their art in life. This is a painting that got away. I wish I'd bought this painting. I love this painting so much. Uh, she, I, first of all, it's her color choices. Her color choices just are uh, br bright without being garish. And, and she uses an economy of strokes, which I really enjoy. She also applies paint in a very juicy way. What I mean by that is the paint can be kind of um, thick in the same, not as thick as um, like icing on a cake, but when an artist works with thicker paint for me and, and, and works with this kind of confidence, I just feel like I'm, I'm in good hands and they're being very generous with me. This is a picture of Sadie who is no longer with us. This is her dog. Look at that pink dot on the nose. Oh gosh, isn't that fantastic? Uh, this is an example of a still life work where she's looking through glass. And we've all seen a lot of work with glass. I mean, I do, I do some as well. Uh, what I enjoy about this is how not persnickety it is in terms of getting everything exactly right. It's the overall impression that matters. Is it a good painting? Yes. Yes, it's a fantastic painting. It also has such a value range from your lightest lights to your darkest darks. There's diagonals happening. Oh my gosh. So anyway, um, she also, what I also learned from her when I first met her, or looked at her work was she could take the simplest of things and make a painting out of it. I mean, what could be simpler than putting this on a table? But the luminosity of it is something that uh, uh, I certainly can't achieve. I think I own this one. No, I don't own this one. What I th meant to say was, I think I purchased this one and sent it as a gift. Uh, so I, I just, I, I, I can't get enough of her, if you know what I mean, because her paintings make me extremely happy. And also to have them around as constant inspiration reminds me of the kind of painter I want to be. Look at how orange the bottom of the feet on the left hand figure are. Boy, that is just good color mixing. Here's again another really good example of um, warm against cool. What could be warmer than the left-hand side of the painting? What could be cooler than, than the right-hand side of the painting? And so somehow you have to join them together, and she does. She also works in gouache, although I haven't seen as many works in gouache as there are in oil. Uh, some of this is, is also quite graphic, which I enjoy because it tells me that she's a really good designer. Nothing is left to chance. It doesn't look like she just sat down and like had a grand old time, but that's not how pieces like this are made. They're made with a lot of work ahead of time in order to strategize what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. 
so that when you sit down, you can be really purposeful so that every stroke matters. I also wanted to include this one because again, it's a really good example of what could be simpler than this. You know, when you think you have nothing to paint, go to your refrigerator, cut something up. <laughs> or if you are not even inclined to cut something up, just grab it and put it down on, uh, you know, in this case, wasn't it smart to put something kind of leaning toward red underneath those uh, string beans, which are green? This is, this is, I'm going to say simplicity at its best, but there's nothing simple about this. Uh, I think I own this one too. <laughs> I own a lot of Linda paintings because, like I said, I find them absolutely delightful. Now you can find her at Linda Hunt Fine Art com and also on Facebook where I think you'll see more of her work than you will on her uh, website which is um, but her Facebook is Linda Hunt Fine Art and you can find her there and say hello to her for me because I I really enjoy her work and would love to see more of it so remember to keep the white to your paper white your paints wet mask for value you can mix for color please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time bye bye